Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the first video in a series that will cover the creation and presentation of local notifications in a Swift UI application. In this series, we'll be covering a number of topics so that by the end, you'll have created a notification manager class that you can add to any one of your projects to help implement local notifications. We'll start with the very important authorization process and how you can watch for and manage changes to the state of your applications. In the second video, we'll cover simple interval-based notifications. And then in the third, we'll go over calendar-based notifications based on date components. The fourth video will get into how you can pass app payload data to the notification and create actions that will allow you to respond to tap events on that notification. So, as I mentioned, our first video will be on authorization. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. I've created a starter project for this series and it's got very little code. I've renamed the entry point as App Entry as it's easier for me to locate. I've added an icon and launch screen because I like to see my apps on the simulator or device home screen. So using Jordi Bruin's Breakery app to create the app icon makes it a no brainer. In content view, I've added a navigation view along with a V stack containing a group with two buttons. One for the interval notification and the other for a calendar based notification. There's a comment placed where we'll be adding a list view that will display all pending requests for notifications, and that'll be coming in the next video. I recommend that you download the starter project and work along with me, because in the end, you'll have a reusable local notification manager class that you'll be able to use in all of your projects if you wish. What we're going to do in this multi-part series is to take a look at many of the aspects of local notifications in SwiftUI using the new asynchronous versions of the UN User Notification Center class. So the first thing that we're going to do is to create that before mentioned local notification manager class that we can inject into the environment and use in our app to manage and respond to notifications. So start by creating a new file and call it local notification manager. Add an import to notification center. And inside there, create a class with the same name, but conform it to the observable object protocol. Then to make things easier, create a constant called notification center that is the UN user notification center current. The thing that we need to do in this class is to request authorization to display notifications. That's a requirement. UN User Notification Center has a function that will request that. So we'll use the new asynchronous version that could possibly throw an error. So in our manager class, create a new function and call it request authorization that is just that. Let's start with notification center and then request authorization and see that we have those two versions of the function. Let's choose the grayed out async version that throws. And this means that we'll have to mark our function as being an async throwing function. And then try and await the outcome. For the options, we can use sound, batch, and alert, though we'll not be using the badge here in this series. In our app entry point, we can create a state object and create an instance of that local notification manager. And then inject it into the environment when we present our content view. Within our content view, we'll declare access to that environment object. And then to make sure that the preview doesn't complain, we'll inject an instance of the location manager into it as well. We can try this out right now in the simulator. So when our app launches, since it's an asynchronous call, we can do that 
when our view appears. Now this will only ever be called once, so we can do that within a task block and we can await that call. And we're not going to worry about the error, if any. In fact, there shouldn't be one, so we'll use try optional. When we run our app for the first time, you're presented with an alert asking you to allow notifications. Let's click on allow. Let me stop and run again. No request. Let's delete the app and run it again. But this time, let's not allow. If I stop and run again, I don't get a request. So we'll need to do a couple of things now. One, we'll need to know what the current authorization state is. And two, if the user has disallowed, as we just did, somehow we'll have to let the user know that they need to authorize through the Settings app, and perhaps even direct them to there. With our authorization not given, the buttons, no matter what I put in the actions to send a notification, will simply not work. So when our app launches, we'll need to be able to see if the permission has been granted by the user to receive notifications. If not, we'll need to change our UI to prompt the user to give an authorization. We can track this in a published property that I'll call is granted and initialize it as false. Next, create another function called getCurrentSettings. The function we need from the notification center is the notification settings, and we want to assign the return state to a constant that I'm calling current settings. And I see that it's an asynchronous function, so I'll need to mark our function itself as being asynchronous and await the outcome to assign to this constant. Now the only value we're interested in is the authorized state. So we can set is granted our published property to be true or false by checking the current settings authorization status and comparing it to the authorized case. For debugging, let's create a print statement that will display the value of is granted. And then we can add that to our request authorization function so that it'll get printed when our app launches. If you test and run now, you'll see that the authorization is showing false as we'd expect. However, we are getting a warning that we are trying to publish changes from the background thread. And we can fix that right away by specifying that the local notification class is a main actor. If we test again, no warning. In content view, we want to be able to display all notifications should there be any and allow the user to create new ones. And this will only be possible if the user is authorized. If they're not, we need some way to tell the user how to do that. So let's fix up content view for more testing then. We only want to display this group box and future list if the LN manager is granted property is true. So let's surround that by that if clause. If it's not, meaning it's false, we can create a button that says Enable Notification. And I'll change the style here to be Bordered Prominent. If I run the app now, I see that because we left our state as being unauthorized, we now get a button that says Enable Notifications. And the action for scheduling a notification will come later. But we want to create an action that will open the Settings app and display the settings so that the user can enable them. In the Local Notification Manager class, create a new function called Open Settings. We can use an if let to unwrap the URLs, that is the string for the UI application Open Settings URL string. Next, We'll check if UI application .shared can open URL for that URL. 
If so, we can call the UI application shared dot open URL function. And it has two versions, one with a completion handler and one that is grayed out because it's asynchronous and we're not in an asynchronous function. I want to use the asynchronous version so I can choose that. But instead of making my function asynchronous itself, I want to embed this call within a task unit of work. That means we can call this function synchronously, but we'll need to await within this task. Back in content view, then, I can make a synchronous call to this open settings function without the caller having to be asynchronous because we'll handle that within our open settings function. Now, when we run the app, since we're not authorized and is granted is still false, we see the enable notification button. And when I tap on it, I see that I'm taken to the settings app. And here, I can turn on notifications. If I return to our app though, it's still telling me to enable notifications. Well, this can be resolved by always checking the current settings whenever our content view becomes active. And this is a change in the scene phase. So in content view, create a new environment property on the key path scene phase and call it scene phase. And each time the scene phase changes, this property will be updated. So in order to watch for that, when it changes, we'll use an onChange modifier that will watch for the changes in the scene phase. And it will provide us with a new value, which will be the new phase. If the new value is active, we can call the ln manager get current settings function. This, however, is an asynchronous function, so we'll need to embed it within a task unit of work and then await the outcome. Let's test. If I run now, I see that I am authorized because we did that. Let's delete the app now and try a number of different scenarios. First, let's run it and authorize. Let's exit to the home screen. And then I'm going to manually go to the notification settings for our app and unauthorize it. If I return to my app, it's now telling me to enable notifications. Great, it recognized that scene phase change. So let's do that. And this time when I return to the app, we're good to go. And that will be covered starting in the next video. That pretty much does it for this lesson. We can now proceed with creating some notifications and we'll see how we can manage them. But we've set the groundwork for our local notification manager now, and we know that we can authorize or deauthorize notifications, and our UI will change accordingly.